Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Reva Param Brahma, Asmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Chinmayam Vyapyat Sarvam, Trilokyam Sacharacharam, Tatpadam darshitam yena Aspai shri murave namaha Vameva maka cha pita Vameva Vameva bandhu cha sakha Vameva Vameva vedya Vameva Sarvam Vameva Sarvam Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Vunatu Sahabiryam Karavai Ejaspinavadi Tamasumadit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 So where are we in our text? We're on number 56 on page 29. Number 56 on page 29. Yeah. Atam Rodashire Chitta Kyat Maivat Mat Manabhava. Viva Vatsa Kalatita Advaitam Paramat Mritam. Why are you weeping, O oh mine? To you, to you, the self, be the self by means of the self. Oh, sorry, to you, the self, be the self by means of the self. Drink, my child, the supreme nectar of non duality, transcending all division. Yes. So. This is an echo in many ways of what Shankara says in Viveka Chudamani, that even after realization of the truth, there exists a strong impression that one is the doer and the enjoyer. So we may have really pretty deep conviction. I know who I am. I don't have doubts about this. But then I still get attached, still at times get it in. Shankara says this needs to be conscientiously rooted out through steady and continuous identification with the self. Now, at one level, we're renouncing our afflictions, our triggers, our attachments, one by one. But when the mind has become thin, then you see, oh, the mind itself is unreal. What need of I to be fussy about the mind? Yeah. 
straw or by itself. And instead drink deep of the nectar. Did he use the word amritam? He did. Yes. So amritam has two meanings. Hmm? Did you have a question or something? Uh, the root is mrit, which means death. It's where we get the English word mortal or mortality or morbid. Uh, means not. So it means nectar, but it also means immortality. So he can say, drink the nectar of non duality, but it also means during the immortality of non duality. Both are valid. This is why, for those of you with the gift for language, which I do not have, I suggest you do a bit of study of Sanskrit. Because Sanskrit is a suggestive language. It is designed to communicate suggestive, spiritual, and philosophical truths. And the same word can have layers and layers and layers of meaning. Now, Susili, you are a translator by profession. So have you ever had the circumstance where perhaps a client uses a particular word in Spanish can have a variety of meanings? Now you have to decide which meaning it is when you translate it. Yes, I can yes. hear you. Yes. yes. Yeah. You've got to rely on context, what you sense from the client, etc. So always when we translate, we're put in the box of needing to choose one word. Well, that's not really the only way it means. You see the layers. Remember, the force Alexa, of stop. She's talking with the <laughs> Now, discussion number two. I was talking with a friend yesterday who's a very deep yogi. I have enormous respect for him. And what we were talking about is some schools of the Dwight Vedanta teach that Nirvikalpa Samadhi is not necessary. Other schools say that we should practice Samadhi. I will give you my particular take on it. Have any of you run into this conversation with other people? Whenever we talk about Nirvikalpa, we always teach two meanings. One meaning, the state of no mind. Everything thunders to a stop. In that state, it doesn't have to be long. It can just be a flash or a moment the space between your thoughts, with the attentive faculty introvert, we get the, the sense of what our essential nature is. Now, those who do not think Nirvikalpa Samadhi is necessary will say, the fruit of Nirvikalpa is just the firmly rooted conviction that I am Brahman. 
if you can get that from studying the scripture, why do you have a need to have anything else? And I can only share with you my own direct experience. Swamiji, by the way, taught the Baker to Domini, taught it himself when other acharyas would teach the two and a half year brahmachari training course, he would have them all come up to Siddhavari and to be the capstone on the event, he would do the Baker to Domini himself. I don't think he would have chosen that text as a capstone unless he is committed to what it said. But more importantly, in the beginning, I would listen to the blah, 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 Swamiji. Oh, he's so brilliant. Oh, God, so wise. Oh, how he, I, I get it when I'm around him. I see, I see, I see. And then after a while, I could tune into his mind and there was this shunya chitta this emptiness of mind he was so empty and I have met other Mahatma There's one I went to see in Jaipur about seven years ago who didn't particularly speak much English. But he was so this incredible thunder of silence. People who used to get the darshan of Ravana and Maharshi who did not use words. One of the fruits of samadhi is the mind can retire into the sun. This is the neck. It's a very specific choice. And my experience has been for those whose minds cannot retire into the self, under the right triggers, their minds continue to attach and get away. Even after realization of the truth, there exists a strong impression that one is the karta and the doer and enjoy. Shankaran says it's the cause for rebirth. That can also mean the cause for re-identification. It needs to be conscientiously rooted out how and continuous identification with the self thinking the net Any thoughts on this? Now, 
Nirvikalpa Samadhi is not the highest state. One of Ramana Maharshi's favorite texts, Tripura Rahasyam. There's the story in the beginning of Hemalaika and Hemachuda. Hemachuda goes deep into meditation, experiences this deep bliss of Samadhi. Hemalaika comes and she goes, Lord. Lord, Lord pulls on his his, his uh, tunic or whatever he was wearing and he says, oh, How is it that you who know of this sublime state are not offended all the time? Leave me alone. She says, My Lord, how can it be a perfect state if its gain or loss is accomplished by opening or closing the eyes? the length of uh, I think it's what eight grains of barley or something so we also don't want to be attached to Samadhi we have to renounce the bliss of Samadhi doesn't mean we don't meditate and enjoy the bliss of meditation, the drinking deep of the nectar of love and love. But then you go to work, and your mind's an ordinary mind. The Sargadatta Maharaj was once asked, are you in samadhi all the time? He says, of course not. But my state is beyond all the mind. Who I am, my identity, is beyond any taste. Subtle, subtle points. Any thoughts on these? If this went over your head, don't worry about it. Keep on practicing. It'll make sense. That's it. Next verse. Naiva bodho, naja bodho, na bodha bodha evacha, yasyai drisha. Sadat bodha, sabodho nanyat abhave. There is neither knowledge nor ignorance, nor knowledge combined with ignorance. He who has always such knowledge is himself knowledge. It is never otherwise. Yes. So the knowledge that's real is not something you know in your intellect. There's some paradoxes here. We actually have two kinds of knowledge we deal with. First is the real knowledge with a capital R. That's the self knowing of the self. How do you know you are you? Who sees the phone? I do. That's yourself. How do you know it? You do not see, hear, taste, touch, or smell, behold, or think yourself. You know the world. Know or knowing and knowing. I, Jim, through seeing, cognize the table. But when it comes to myself, it is out side of time and space. If I remove all the other kinds of knowledge, mean knowledge of objects, only that real knowledge remains. Now here's the great cosmic joke. You had it all along. 
So the scriptures say both bondage and liberation occur to the mind. My only bondage is in my mind. I think I'm bound. I think I'm a person. The only liberation is the deeply rooted conviction in the intellect. I think rooted in direct experience. But I'm not a person. I'm Brahma. Now, where does that go when you go to sleep? Swamiji only slept four hours a night. What was his knowledge? Deep sleep for those four hours. I don't know. So that awakening of the subtle intellect, called enlightenment, self-realization, becoming a woman or man of wisdom, actually occurs in the realm of mind. It occurs in the world. It's mine. In the end, bondage and liberation are not real. Why should I be concerned? Again, this is advanced teaching. If beginners take this on, it short circuits their side. And they use verses like this to rationalize their side. You don't have to go around all day thinking I am the self, I am the self, I am the self. At one level, when we're doing discrimination, of course you think that. I'm not the body, I'm not that feeling, I'm the witness of it. Where did that come from? But when you're firmly rooted in the moment, It's myself. Where am I ever not me? If you know that that's so, such a If you know that self is not a person, technical term for this is pratya vijnana, recognition. The aha happens in the subtle. Though it occurs in the world of Maya. Well, my problems are in the world of Maya. Self doesn't have any problems. I'm going to hold these paradoxes. Next verse. Jnanam na tarko. Na samadhi yoga na adhyaya prakriti. Yanam na tarko na samadhi yoga na desha kalo na guru padesha swabhavasan vitti raham chatatvam akasha kalpam sahajam dhruvam cha. There is no need of knowledge, reasoning, time, 
space instruction from a teacher or attainment of samadhi. I am naturally the perfect consciousness, the real, like the sky, spontaneous and steady. So here he gives us the instruction. After you've been able to drink deep of the bliss of Brahman, now let go. And the word he's used here for naturally is sahaja. Natural or continuous samadhi is the knowledge that I am. The deep, subtle intellect becomes awake. Does this mean I should stop meditating? If you have knowledge of the self, no amount of meditation will give you more knowledge of the self. But then several of my students were pretty rooted in the knowledge. And they've gone on long 10 day meditation retreats. And perhaps experienced quieter and quieter minds. But what I like to do when they return is no more self now. Self is deeper, always. Now again, Swami Tejo Mayanandi used to say, you can't pronounce something you haven't bought. In his funny voice, he would say, I renounced being president of the United States this morning. Nonsense, he was never going to be president of the United States. So don't renounce the fruits of deep meditation because it's hard. If you feel stuck, God, I've been meditating for 10 years and I still haven't achieved samadhi. My suggestion is don't chase samadhi. You might have a romantic notion about what it is. Do you know who you are? That's the problem. We have doubts at times, will help us. And what holds the egoistic mind in place, wait for it, is always attachment and identity. What is it I need to give up? My belief in the mind itself. There's another story. I think it's from Trifoda or the Hasya, but it may be Yoga Vasish. I get the two scriptures confused at times. So there was this king and this queen, and they were ruling this country. And they decided they both wanted to do uh, practices, do sadhana. And uh, she had a, a real gift for this work and very quickly attained samadhi, realized her self nature. It was at peace. The king decides, all right, I'm going to give up being king. Wifey, you run the country. And he goes off to the forest to do austerity. So he builds himself a hut, 
brings out all these religious ritual objects and he does puja. He does religious rituals, chanting Lalita Sahasranam and Vishnu Sahasranam and Bhagavad Vajanam, all these various things. That's why it keeps getting reports. So the desire for Siddhis arises in here. I love it. It's the beauty of the subjective voice in Sanskrit. It's not that she decided, oh, I want Siddhis. The desire was to those. So she becomes a Siddha. And she changes her form to a young Brahmin boy who calls himself Kumbha. So she's no longer Kshatriya name, she's Brahmin boy. She's marching off to the forest. Her husband, the king, sees her, thinks that this is old Brahmin, worthy of respect and reverence. He does all the rituals that are appropriate for a Brahmin. He says, I got some doubts. Can you help me out? Kumba said, Ask me. I've been doing tapas here in the, in the forest for 10, 12 years. Still haven't got it. What's the matter? Ah, uh, you need to give up to renounce everything. She says, Dude, I renounced my kingdom. I don't have any money. I just have rags for clothes and a begging bowl and my ritual objects. Cooper says it's not enough. Okay, I'm going to give up my hut. I'm going to give up my ritual objects. I'm going to even give up my begging bowl. Kumba says it's not enough. Then the king says, Okay, I'm going to give up all my clothes and be sky clad. says it's not enough. So then the king says, all right, it's only one thing left for me to give up and that's my body. I'm going to jump off a cliff and kill myself. And Kumba says, it's not enough. So he says, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what else there is to renounce. Kumba says, the only thing we need to renounce is the mind that doesn't mean you get a frontal lobotomy. It means Give up your belief in your thoughts and feelings as meaning. This is the meaning of renouncing the world. When you have renounced the mind, the mind of the world, the world is the mind. You renounce the world. Only then the king attains. Any thoughts on this? Do you remember what scripture it's from? Which one? I think it's from Deborah. I think it's from Deborah. The fun story. 
Kumba, by the way, means pot. So the Brahmin called himself pot. And that's a joke because in a lot of the scriptures, we have pot space and room space, and the body is like the pot with the pot space. So, ha ha ha, it's fun. <laughs> To see the fundamental unreality of the mind. You can't think of real thought. Even not knowing is unreal. You can turn the mind. Next verse. Wonder if he sang Kumbaya. Nachato hamrite vapina, ne karma shubha shubham, vishuddham nirgunam dhamma, bandho mukti katham mama. I was not born, nor have I death. I have no action, good or evil. I am Brahman. Stainless without qualities. How can, there, how can there be bondage or liberation for me? Yes. So it is not that I am a foul jiva and I'm going to become a liberated soul. We use that language in the beginning. Yourself is ever free. Yourself was never bound. You do not realize, oh, I'm no longer bound. I'm free now. No. At the moment of realization, you see, oh, there's no one there. Yet I shine as pure awareness. It's me. It's the self. It's myself. How could I have missed it all these years? It's so obvious. It's so here. I was never born in the first place. You and I have an idea like this. Oh, I awakened from this terrible dream where I was locked in a closet in a house. I need to go back into the dream now and let me out of the closet. Nobody thinks that. How did you get free from the closet in the dream? You woke up. You see the fundamental unreality of the dream state. That's what self-realization is. To emotion. Nothing touches me. Don't believe me. Don't believe the scripture. Look. Investigate. With a quiet mind. Who are you? And through the day, keep checking that out. Oh, Jim, on Mondays, I'm gold white light. On Tuesdays, I'm pink. On Wednesdays, I'm a blue pearl. Is that the truth? Oh. Are you always Chidamanda with me in the form of this kind of existence? Next point. <clears throat> Yadi Sarvagat. 
यदि सर्वगतो देवा स्थिरा पूर्णो निरंतर अनंतरम की न पश्या स बाह्यांतर कथम इफ गॉड पवेट्स ऑल इफ गॉड इज इमूवेबल फुल अनडिवाइडेड देन आई सी नो डिविजन हाउ कैन ही हैव एक्सपीरियर और इंटीरियर so sometimes we think god is within me or god is out there i am going to pray to god one of the the ultimate word for god in sanskrit is brahman first mahavakya It's not outside, it's not inside. It feels in the beginning like it's within or behind. But that's a psychic spatial illusion. just like when you're in the dream state feels like i'm in the dream like keeping out of the dream eyes hearing out of the dream ears so don't be fooled by spatial stuff you are looking for you are looking with it is not that which you worship here <coughs> next one spurat yeva jagat अखंडित निरंतर अहो माया महामोहो द्वैताद्वैत विकल्पना द होल यूनिवर्स शाइन्स अनडिवाइडेड एंड अनब्रोकन ओ द माया द ग्रेट डिल्यूजन द इमेजिनेशन ऑफ ड्यूआलिटी एंड नॉन ड्यूआलिटी यस So I'm not going to get it out tonight but for many of you you've seen me do this in class I bring out the crystal ball. Jory have you been in a class where I brought out the crystal ball? I haven't no. Oh, he said Bridget I get it. <laughs> okay. So you you open the right hand side. I I'm going to grab the ball. Sure. I need my uh what do they call these visual aids? You see it? Yes. I was going to get it out. Thank you, Jordi. Oh. Okay. I should polish it while it's out. <laughs> okay, can you see the crystal ball there, Jordi? Yes. Okay. It's heavy because this is not glass. This is spatika. This is flawless quartz crystal. Now, it's a stone. This is a Tibetan prayer stone. It's granite. It's stone. There is a difference between these two stones. This one has no quality to have any reflecting properties. It's jada inner. The spatika very interesting. Now, can you guys all see objects reflected in the stone? Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. zoom you see that? I can. Yeah, yeah, we can we can. Okay. 
Now, as I move the thing back and forth, are the objects moving? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you see inside? You. Upside you down. upside down. You see me? Oh, I need to get a saw and cut open the stone and pull me out. Can I do that? No. No. Is there really a me inside the stone? Sure nope. looks like it. And I'm upside down on top of it. <laughs> I do my yoga in the stone. I stand on my head. <laughs> it's very interesting. This is a homogeneous mass of crystal. Spatika Ganda. Homogeneous mass of stone. But it has a property. It has its own kind of Maya Shakti. It does not move. It does not change. It does not become an upside down gym. It doesn't vibrate a little bit to become an upside down gym. It has the inherent property of having images appear. So also is Brahman. Brahman is Vijnana Dhanam, a homogeneous mass of consciousness. And because of its inherent Maya Shakti, the world of name and form appears. Now, if the gem in the stone, let's say I got out a knife and cut my head and I'm bleeding. And the gem in the stone is bleeding. Is there anything that's happened to the stone? No. If the gem in the stone is happy, I'm sure. The stone never changes, so also you never change. A world of name and form appears in by the wonder of Maya. Spatika Ganam, homogeneous mass of stone, Vijnana Ganam, homogeneous mass of consciousness. Right. Can I ask you to return it to its Elephant. Isn't that a cool visual aid? Didn't make it up. It's in scripture. I just happen to have a crystal ball. <laughs> that was my grandfather's. No idea how I ended up and kept it around and stuff. <laughs> it's useful. Yeah. All right, next verse. Sakaram Chanirakaram Neti Neti Tisarvada Beda Beda Vinir Mukto Vartate Kevada Shivaha. Always, not this, not this, to both the formless and the form. Only the absolute exists. 
transcending difference and non-difference. Yes. So the presence of objects is shunyata, empty. The absence of objects is shunyata, empty. The awareness of the phenomenal world is shunyata, empty. The emptiness of samadhi is shunyata, empty. Whether the world is perceived or not perceived, what concern have I? For those of you in Zoom land, in my apartment here, I have a bay window overlooking the street and the park across the street. So I can be inside my apartment at night. And if it's storming and thundering outside, it does not touch me. If it's a beautiful, bright day, it does not touch me. If someone walks by, it does not touch me. If a huge truck goes by, it does not touch me. If there's an automobile accident out front, it never touches me. I'm always the dude looking out the window witnessing it. So also, nothing that happens in the world of name ever touches me. Every name and form is temporary. Watch, enjoy, Next one. Nate Jamata Chapita Chabandu Nate Chapatni Nasut Chachamitram Napakshapato Navipakshapata Katham his son Patti Riam Hivichete. You have no mother, no father, no wife, no son, no relative, no friend. You have no likes or dislikes. Why is this anguish in your mind? So, where the rubber hits the road for most of us is family. So we have these relationships. Does anybody know what the word for relatives is in Sanskrit? Bandha. Yes. Did you all hear that in Zoom land? No. Bandha. What's the word for bondage in Sanskrit? Bandha. Bandha. I think it's very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. The Rishis kind of knew where do we get really attached? Wife, husband, children, parents. And I'm not talking about if your mother dies. That's usually not where the issue is. It's more about, I'm so pissed at my husband or wife or 
but my kids just won't do what I tell them to do. I'm so worried. I want them to be happy. Mama, sound familiar? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the stuff that really rattles us. Deep breathe, of course. We move through that. day-to-day basis. It's our need to control, seeing our relatives as extensions of our egos, or seeing ourselves as extensions of our relatives' egos. I'm okay if I do what guys they say they want. All of this has to go. Now, many people look at the sannyasi and say, oh, that's too austere for me. I want, I'm going to just be a householder. I tell you, the way of the sannyasi is a lot easier. To do your duty with your family responsibilities and stay detached, that's tough. But if that's your dharma, that's what you do. What about my love for my children? In secret, we have to let it go. Can't hold on any Oh, I just be destroyed if my husband and my wife I was talking with the gal and she was just completely distraught. She'd been dumped by some fella. It was working out really well. How long were you seeing him? Three months. She's really young. For her, that's a long-term relationship. But then think of the Queen of England. Losing her husband after 73 years of marriage. That is pain. No escaping the pain of attachment. Yeah. The mind gets attached. Okay. Just depends on what your pain level is. But here, I have no relation. I am Kavalan. Not meaning alone as an ego. Meaning there's only one of us here. Now, what this frees us to do is love in a very different Love whoever's in front of us. When they pass, someone else comes in front of us. We love on them.
Next one. Devam Maktam Nate Chittam Udayasta Mayao Nahi Vide Hasya Shari Ratvam Kalpayanti Katham Buddha O mind, for you there is no day or night, rising or setting. How can the wise imagine an embodied state for the bodiless? Okay, so now he's riffing on one of the discussions that some of the scriptures have between what we call the Jivan Mukta, the, someone who's the, the one who's liberated while in this very body, and Videha Moksha or Videho Moksha, liberated beyond the body. The one definition of Videho Moksha is you do all your proper rituals and things like that, then if you're good, you have lots of merit, punya. When you die, you go to Brahma Loka, and that's where you hang out having a super sensuous time till the end of the age, and then you're liberated. Actually, listen carefully. Being Jivan Mukta, and the Deho Moksha are the same thing. Literally speaking, the Deho Moksha means liberation beyond the body. The mark of the woman or man of wisdom. They are beyond the body. Other people may see your body inside mark of the person of wisdom. Because they know they are the self, God. So distinctions like being Jivan Mukta or Videho Moksha means for the same. Now, what it also points to, there's a state that some yogis get into where they let go of a lot of their attachments, but they still have aversions and subtle mental afflictions. And so they kind of want oblivion. Oh, this world is so terrible. I'm becoming so sensitive. I just can't stand this vulgar, evil world. I can't wait till I get liberated when I won't have to come back. That's not freedom. But if you're going to be in a body for the rest of eternity, This is it. Can you give up any desire, any need for it to be any different? Total surrender. Total acceptance. What concern have I whether the body drops off or not? See, they're actually. Any thoughts on this? One more. Navi Paktam Vipaktam Cha Nahi Dukkha Sukhadi Cha Nahi Sarvam Sarvam Cha Vithi Chatmana Mavyayam 
The self is neither divided nor undivided, nor has it sadness, happiness, and the like, nor is it all or less than all. Know the self to be immutable. What was the first part of the son you said? No, the self is neither divided. Self, read the whole thing again. Sir, I heard the wrong word. The self is neither divided or undivided, nor has it sadness, happiness, and the like, nor is it all or less than all. Know the self to be immutable. So we're back to the metaphor of the Spatika and Tanam, the homogenous mass of crystal, which is kutusta, it is stable, still, and immovable. All this world of name and form grows and subtle, meaning all the feelings and the thoughts, stupid ideas. That includes the stupid ideas that you and I think of frequently. Or just a lot of shit. Okay, we'll stop here tonight. Any thoughts or questions before we end? Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamugachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, Ari Om Sri Guru Namaha, Ari Om. Thank you all.